guys, this week I built a lumber cart right next to my table saw. After I cut a piece of wood and then the cutoff, I set it somewhere so I can go ahead and build. So now I can just take that piece and put it directly onto my scrap wood cart and contain the mess. Should have done it three years ago. For this project, I'm using three quarter inch sanded plywood and I used two full sheets plus a little bit from my scrap pile. I'm building this lumber cart on the floor so that it will be really easy for me to just tip it up once it's done. This is a temporary solution for me because I have to reconfigure my shop eventually. So I'm not using any glue. So I'll be able to just take these screws back out and use all of this wood as scrap wood when I'm done. To maximize the use of my plywood, I built the cabinet 24 inches deep and I'm just using one and three quarter inch wood screws to assemble the whole thing. And these Bessie right angle clamps work awesome to keep parts square to each other while you drive the screws into place. To create sides on my little platform, I cut a piece of wood in half at an angle. So I ended up with two triangle pieces and I sanded the exposed corners so that they wouldn't be sharp. I drove screws through the bottom and back to secure the triangle pieces onto the cart. Building on the floor will make it more convenient for me to tip this lumber cart up into place when it's finished, but it does pose a problem for building because you can't get the drill in place to drive screws, so it takes a little finagling to um, position it so that you can get all the screws in. My lumber cart is made up of three long vertical pieces. Two are the same length, but one is longer. So I created a transition from the lower to the taller portion by arcing up a back piece. I secured that into place and this serves double duty as kind of creating a visual transition from the lower to taller portion as well as holding those dividers the, the appropriate width apart since there's only one shelf lower in that section. I'm attaching casters with three inch screws where the screws will drive up into dividers and then using one inch screws with washers where the screw is going to only be secured into the three quarter inch plywood. I'm using four inch locking swivel casters to make it easy to wheel this cart around but then lock it into place when it's positioned. This cart's not terribly heavy but I was afraid that it would just scooch around on the wheels so my husband helped me tip it up into place. Once I had the lumber cart tipped up and put into place, I finished the build by attaching cleats across the back of each cubby. This is to prevent the wood from being pushed through the cart and out the back. And I guess I wanted to test those cleats out and make sure they worked because I loaded the whole thing up with scrap wood before I finished building it. So then I had to unload it, unlock the casters. It was a little extra work. I got ahead of myself in my excitement to get organized. The trickiest thing for me to figure out on this lumber cart was brackets on the side to help hold long vertical wood stored smooshed tightly together so that it wouldn't bend or warp or bow or twist. I first added um, additional side supports, little strips of one by two um, higher up on the cart and then I rabbited some poplar and secured that to the lumber cart. I made a total of four rabbited cleats and spaced them somewhat evenly. I wish I would have done five and put an additional one at the very top. I also added a little um, cleat across the front of the triangle pieces to act as a ledge to keep wood from sliding off. It took a couple test tries to figure out my support bracket. I rounded the ends that would be sticking out and then the side that would hook on to the cleat. I cut that out with a jigsaw and sanded it, tested it to make sure it would fit and got that just right. And then I made these secondary brackets which are just a little block that are notched out to fit above and below the larger bracket and secure that into place. I made those secondary brackets by notching them out on the table saw and then I cut them into sections. In the end, I glued and screwed the secondary brackets to the larger brackets, creating one bracket assembly. That way, everything is easy to reposition in just one go instead of having to move three parts instead of just one. 
the very outside edge has only a half of the secondary bracket so that they don't stick out beyond the side of the cart. With the initial bracket in place and then the supports on the top and bottom of the lumber cart, I put the wood that I want to store in place and then smush the wood over as tight as I can together and then screw the, the next bracket row in place. It's a little bit of work every time you want to relocate the brackets if you use wood or want to put more wood in place. But this is what I came up with that would allow me to put a bracket anywhere I wanted without doing pre-drilled holes for dowels or anything else that would only give me limited spacing choices. I only made eight brackets and that's enough to store the pre-finished drawer material that I have in stock. I need to make some more so I can store my poplar face frame and door material and keep that straight or I need to put another row of brackets on my wall. I still have so much to do to get organized in my workshop, but it is time to move back up to the studio. So the workshop organization is good enough for the time being. And I drilled holes in the end in case I needed to do a bungee or a piece of rope or something across the front to hold wood in place if I feel like it might tumble forward. It's held in place really securely so I'm not utilizing that, but that's why there's a hole there. I have a basic um, explanation of how this went together in a blog post that you can see. And then if you want more details on the full set of plans that you can print out, you can purchase that in my ebook and plan shop. So check the video description for links to those items. And thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.